person we gather for worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As usual, it's a delight to be able to welcome uh, everyone here this morning, whether we're here in person or worshipping online. It's good to have you with us. Um, just so that you're aware, if you've not heard already, uh, one of our regular serving team, uh, Michael Rogerson, who when he wasn't serving would often sit in the front row here, died suddenly uh, earlier in the week. So we keep Michael very much in our thoughts and prayers. If you are here for Sunday Club, time at this point to follow not Jill, not Sophie, but Angela into the Lady Chapel. As we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sin. God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord.
O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is hope, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and reading from the first book of Samuel. David said to Saul, let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who saved me from the poor of the lion and from the poor of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armour. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to it. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand, and chose five smooth stones from the wadi, and put them in his shepherd's bag, and in the pouch his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the air and the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead, and the stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. For the word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter to the Corinthians. As we work together with him, we urge you also, 
not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacles in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors, and yet we are true, as unknown, and yet we are well known, as dying and see we are alive, <coughs> as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak as to children. Open wide your hearts also for the word of the Lord. I speak in our
When evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great gale arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? This this is the gospel of the Lord. Luckily, we were with Bishop Christopher and the Dean of Southwark on board, so I thought, if I perish, at least we'll be in good company. It brought to mind the reality of this story from Mark's Gospel we heard today. You see, John, James, Peter, Andrew, and the rest of them had accepted already a call to follow Jesus. And it had all been pretty good so far. Follow me wasn't a hard thing to do. <coughs> and I guess all of us would say to the Lord, yes, of course I'll follow you. You have the words of eternal life. I will see miracles. I will be on the right side. God will protect me. Why wouldn't I say yes when Jesus calls out and says, follow me? <coughs> but that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side, a night trip across the sea into the unknown. That's a different kind of following. <coughs> and our epistle reminds us while we're thinking of boats, that following God is not always plain safe. Just as it wasn't on Galilee that day. So Paul tells us a bit what following can be like. He says, it's 
rather like a servant of God, we commend ourselves in every way in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, distress, in hard work, sleepless nights and hunger, purity, understanding, patience and kindness in the Holy Spirit and in sincere love. A whole mixture of trials and glories. That's what following can mean. Jesus has been training his disciples. They've seen him preach. They've seen him work miracles. But now he asks them to follow him some more. And after a long day already, he says to them, let's go over to the other side. <coughs> It'd have been nice if he had said after the long day, come on, disciples, let's get some shaddai and go back to Capernaum and have a nice meal together. But there's some urgency about what he wants. Are they willing to go over with him? They were. Are we? Let's go over to the other side. From the lake, they would have seen the distant mountainous hills of Samaria, a place where Jews were very unpopular. And we already know the rest of the story of the gathering swine and so on, know that it's a rocky road he is to travel. Those of us who like to picture the language of the church, that picture language of the church, might want to see a deeper meaning. Many churches, after all, look like upturned boats. There's even a, ch a church in Brighton that boasts the dimensions of the Noah's Ark. Some of us might want to do a bit of dreaming and play with our minds, imagining Jesus calling his disciples into the ship of salvation, which is the church, calling us all to come aboard and go over to the other side. Some of us may also dream that Jesus is calling us onward to the other side, but we rather like it where we are. It's safe. We know where we are. I remember being a small boy with my father in Southampton Docks, where we were being hustled by a man in a striped voice, wanting us to take a trip on the Skylark for a tour of the harbour. It was pouring with rain. And the man said, don't worry, it's only Scotch mist. The call for our change of our course in our lives can be very scary. I remember that I'm one week short of nearly 50 years from the day I went in, um, this day I would have gone into retreat to prepare for my ordination as a deacon. All I remember was a growing sense of fear at that time. What was I getting myself into? Fear that I would let the church down, or let myself down, or prove my family right when they looked upon it as an amazingly foolish enterprise. Yet Jesus was inviting me into the boat, but I was so, so scared of the storms. Scared of God indeed, and scared of all that might be expected of me. It was such a temptation to walk away. Back in the boat, in Mark's Gospel, we hear how the storm rose. It says, a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Well, Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? You see, like the disciples, I'd forgotten the most important thing. It's not where I was called 
to be going, not where I was called to follow, but it was who am I following? Who am I following? One who may indeed lead me through still waters and sometimes stormy waters, but one who promises to never leave me and never forsake me. So at whatever stage of life we are, from the very youngest here to the oldest, we are all still being called to follow and perhaps to risk going that bit into an unknown over the other side. Jesus calls his disciples to watch with him, proclaim the good news with him, to pray with him, and to follow right, him right through to Jerusalem, onto that hill where he gave his life for us. The call is ever on and the Holy Spirit of God each day calls us into unknown territory. We're always conflicted, ever wanting to hold on to what we know, because it is what we know, even if it's far worse than what may be over the other side. We're all a little bit autistic. We resent change, and the truth of the matter is, however, that if we do not move on, we are changed anyway. We are changed in our lives as much by what we reject as by what we embrace. My call to ordination was as much as anything God's best for me. I didn't know it at the time, but it turns out it was the best way he could save me from myself. So when we move on in life, we need to ask ourselves, what is the character and the, nation of the, of the nature of the person who is asking us to follow them? If it was the dodgy sailor of the striped shirt in Southampton, then we'd be fools to follow. We'd want our money at any cost. But what if it were the one who even the winds and sea obey? That beautiful Galilean fisher of men being the one that is doing the calling and calling you and me. The disciples found out which one it was when they rose, roused the sleeping Jesus to save the rocking boat. Did you notice that they were still afraid after the storm had abated? Their lives were saved, but they asked one another, by whom? What kind of being can command the wind and the waves? This is a very much more powerful saviour than they had even begun to imagine when they started to follow him. They only found that out when they moved on to the other side. So when we are called by God to change, to move forward in some way, we are called to say our oh, yes. It's not like following a politician, army captain, commercial manager, for we are in the hands of the living God, for even the winds and sea obey. We're not called, called to follow a vain leader, but a feet washer, a servant of us all. He requires no money, no accolades, no pomp, no crown. If we are going to put our cross by anyone, let it be the one who went on the cross for us. These are difficult times. We can feel swamped by the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune,
storms of passion, wars, rumours of wars. But when we cling on in fear, we can't carry on. We hold on in fear, our land and this very earth capsizes. Let us remember, in the middle of our fear, who really is our Lord and our God. But when I hear Jesus calling us in the Gospels to another shore, if I get longer in the tooth and less sound in wind than thin, I can't help thinking about that other shore to which Jesus also calls us. We used to hear about it in the words of the nine lessons and carols, bidding prayer. Let us remember before God, they would say, all those who rejoice with us, but on another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number, whose hope was in the Word made flesh, and with whom in this Lord Jesus we forevermore are one. As we grow older, our last task is to embrace that call with equanimity, the big ask. The whole process of aging is a humbling experience, to put it mildly. And our faith is tested ever more strongly as we experience it. I have a lasting memory of a funeral service I took for my first Jeff Warden's husband. He asked for an old fisherman's hymn for his funeral. And it goes like this, will your anger hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife, when the strong tides lift and the cables strain, will your anchor drift or firm remain? This only further reminds me of another well-known thing. Jesus calls us or the tumult of our life's wild, restless sea. Day by day, his sweet voice sounded, saying, Christian, follow me. Amen. In union with Christ and in the power of the Spirit, let us pray to the Father. <clears throat> Lord.
Lord of the Church. We give you thanks for the life of your Church gathered in this place, for its work of worship, witness and pastoral care across the centuries. We give you thanks for the life of this Diocese of Southwark, for Christopher, Rosemary and Martin our bishops. Lord, hear us. Lord of the world, we pray for your creation at this time. In times of trouble or distress, of conflict and warfare, we pray for your peace and your calm. We pray for all who at this time are seeking election to Parliament, for His Majesty the King and all who under him exercise authority. Lord, hear us. Father, who in Trinity is perfect community, we give you thanks for the communities of which we are part, for our friends, families, colleagues and neighbours, for this community of Karshanti. And we pray too for all whom we know to be in particular need at this time, those who are going through the storms of life. We remember in a moment of quiet all who have asked for our own prayers, all for whom private prayer has been offered in this place, and all whose names are laid upon the altars of this church. Lord, hear us. God of resurrection, we remember before you all those who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and all those whose faith is known to you alone. Grant them your peace. Let light perpetual shine upon them, and grant them your perfect will. Lord, hear us. So we come before you now in a moment of quiet and make our own personal prayers. We gather up these and all of our prayers in the company of Blessed Mary and all the saints. Merciful Father, accept these prayers. Christ is ours. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and we share in his peace. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ.
Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands has made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual bread. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit. The broken bread and wine out for may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised them. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he prayed, gave it to them and said, Drink this all of you. This is my blood of the two covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him, 
we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Amen. Justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. taught us. So we pray in the language of our cross. Our Father, who art in heaven, heard be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. So we are one body, because we all share in one bread. that all those who are baptised in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit are very welcome to receive Holy Communion here this morning. If you want to receive a blessing instead, please do come up and bring your service booklet with you. This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his Son. Lord, I am worthy that thou shouldst come unto my room, but speak the word over me. And my soul shall be
I published The Bands of Marriage between Henry Robert Capra, Capra Allen of this parish and with a qualifying connection to St James Sussex Gardens, London, and Amy Elizabeth Hines of the parish of St Albans and St Edmund, Dartford. This is for the third time of asking if any of you know cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony, we are to declare it. So we pray God's blessing upon them and all those preparing for marriage uh, in the coming weeks and months. <laughs> I shall aim to keep my notices as brief as is physically possible. However, please do take a copy of the notice sheet away with you. One or two things just very briefly to highlight. On this coming Tuesday, the book group will be meeting as planned, but not at the curate. It should be meeting at the home of uh, Father Howard and Helen at 72 Park Lane. Normal time, just a different place. Um, it's been a busy weekend of concerts, but there's more concerts coming up. So uh, there is the next one, which is on the Saturday the 29th of June, and that's Sutton Symphony Orchestra with A Night at the Movies. And then on Saturday the 6th of July, the following week, Carshalt and Choral Society are in producing a summer concert, A Sprig of Time. <coughs> Tickets for uh, those are available on their websites and their flyers are on, the, on our website as well. Um, the next wine tasting will be on Friday the 12th of July, which is just under three weeks away, uh, and there are still tickets available. If you've not been to one of the wine tastings before, um, now is your perfect opportunity to give it a go. Uh, and if you would like more information, there are enough of us here who have been to one in the past uh, to let you know what happened other than tasting wine. Um, they're organised by Chris Williams, who isn't here today, but if you would like to book a ticket, and it is uh, by ticket only, do have a word uh, with Marion before you leave, or uh, send a, a message to Chris, either on his email or through the office. Um, no, services this week are very much as normal, except that on Friday at 11 o'clock there will be a requiem mass for the late Tony Newell. Tony, for many years, was a stalwart um, at this service, uh, as well as singing in the choir. And uh, all are very welcome to come along uh, for that service, 11 o'clock on Friday. Um, Next Sunday we have our guest preacher of the month here at 10.30, the very Reverend Dr. Mark Oakley, the Dean of Southwark, um, who is a renowned uh, writer, uh, speaker, uh, and has a real gift for linking spirituality and the arts. Do come along and hear Dean Mark if you're available. Uh, there's something else happening next Sunday, which is that someone is celebrating the 50th anniversary of his ordination to the diaconate. Um, so there will be uh, some cake and nibble, cake and, and bubbly after that to uh, help Father Howard celebrate. Uh, and just in case it had not, you hadn't noticed, there's someone else celebrating uh, an ordination anniversary in the coming weeks as well. I won't say anything else about that except that it's on Friday the 5th of July at half past seven here in church and uh, the preacher of that will be uh, our guest preacher for July, uh, Father Bill Wilson, who was my boss when I was at St James Sussex Gardens. Oddly, second time that's been mentioned in the service today. Keeping on the party theme, someone's got a birthday today, Marilyn. Um, so there is cake and bubbly after the service today as well to help Marilyn celebrate her birthday. I think that those are all the notices. Can I just interrupt? Oh, yes, apparently not. With one more notice. Um, Father David has reminded us that next, not, this, not next Friday, but Friday after, Friday the 5th, will be a celebratory mass followed by a party 
to celebrate his 25 years of ministry. Um, as a congregation, we'd like to give a gift to mark the occasion. Um, so if you do want to contribute, have a word with Marion. Um, you can do it through the um, uh, contact list or, or cash, whichever works best for you. But um, it's an important occasion, not only for Father David, but for our, the whole congregation. So please give James. Thank you. Now, someone's brought a Sunday club for the first time today. Over to Angela. Hold your stones out towards me. Holy and loving God, we thank you for the gifts, skills and talents that you give us. May these stones be a reminder of those gifts and talents now and always. Amen. Now and always. Amen. Amen. 